All right, so Dean, you are not walking a frog. What are no. you doing? What are you doing? I mean, not like I, I could even do this, man. <laughs> I'm really in the frog is what I'm doing. You know, one of the quick ways you can break down an area, you know, especially when you have a big uh, area that's full of duckweed and lily pads and grass, is to use the frog as a search bait for you. And basically what I mean by that is throwing the bait way back in there as far as you can in a slow wind, okay? Now you can sit there and work the frog, but it'll take you three minutes to work it to get it all the way back. But all we're trying to do right now is to locate them. We're just trying to find them in this big sea of, of vegetation. So you don't you don't care if they get it? No, I yeah, it, it, it doesn't matter if I get them or not, but as long as they show themselves to me, then I know where they're at. So what you can break down an area in half the time if you were, you know, working the bait slowly. And it's a lot like a kick and toad type thing presentation when you're throwing it over, you know, matted vegetation yeah. and just winding it on top of the surface. It's no different than this. The only thing is we don't have any kicking legs on here, but it doesn't matter because the frog is sitting lower and it's pushing more water. So it's causing uh, an even bigger disturbance on the water, you know, un underneath the water. Okay. And that's exactly what you want to break down an area this big. All right. So say you're, you're, you know, on this retrieve, a fish comes and slashes at the bait. Yes. Do you care or do you need two or three of those before you're going to say, okay, I'm going to fish here for real? Yeah, that depends. If I'm in tournament mode, it's a tournament situation, I will stop, power pole down, and then work the area real slow. Because this time of year, they're going to be grouped up. So if you find one, there's probably going to be in two or three in that area. Okay. And so that way, you know, they've told you where they're at. So now it's just a matter of breaking it down and working it slow and really enticing them to come out and get the bait. Okay. So if it wasn't a tournament, you would kind of look for more action? Is that what you're saying? Or yes, no? because you want to, I mean, there could be, you know, 15 of these bays yeah. and, and you only have, you know, a certain amount of time to, to, to break it down and to cover it. So, and you got to fish, you have points, you have pockets, you have drains, you've got everything that you need to look at yeah. in 15 different other areas. So, you know, the key is speed, efficiency, trying to locate them quickly figure out where they're at, how they want want the bait, and then move on to the next one. Okay, so now, on that note, we got a point right here, we mm -hmm. got pad fields, mm -hmm. we got this little duckweed looking stuff, we got another point over here, we got pickups over here of some kind, like, you you drive in here, where do you start trying to find them? Like, always start on a point. Always start on a point. Yeah, points are always good, points are ambush points for the bass. And there's always going to, they have to go by there at some point. Either okay. they want to get to the back of the packet. That's like three times he used the word point, not referring to an actual point. That's pretty cool, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I tripped up deep on that one. <laughs> but, yeah. but they have to go by it at some point. to get yeah, it deep, See what I water. mean? They have to go by it. So, <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, no, okay, points and then what? So you start on the point, you don't get any bites, or uh -huh. you don't get any uh, blow-ups or slashes. So okay. where do you go then? Well, then you just start feeding it around, and you might have to go back for, for the back in the pocket, you know, to find them where they're at, where they're located at. So, okay. but, and that's that's the thing of breaking it down, and that's, you know, the beauty of, you know, of bass fishing is trying to figure out where they're at. Okay. You know, and what they're keying in on and, and how you can catch them. All right, so points... Now, you know, like, um, is it just a point? Does there need to be deep water off the point? I mean, is it a shallow point? I mean, what are we talking about? Or does it matter? Well, it does because it depends on where you're fishing, you know, and what um, part of the country you're fishing at because different things are different uh, areas. This is pretty predominantly flat, okay? So we're in two and a half feet of water here. You can imagine 200 yards that way, you know, it's probably a foot. Yeah. So you have this big spans and it only changes a, a foot, a, you know, one foot in, in depth. But if you're fishing like stuff that's closer to the channel where you have drop off and four and five feet of water underneath there, man, that's a lot of fun. Different technique on the frog, but you, you can still utilize, you know, the frogging technique from trying to catch them. Okay. So it's, you, you are looking for a little depth is what I'm hearing? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want, you want depth change, but okay. sometimes Jay, they just bury back up in those pads. I mean, as far back as you can go, they're just sitting back there, and you can't. I mean, who's going to go up there? And you know, they don't, they're away from the pressure. I yeah. mean, that's yeah. nobody's bothering up there, and they're just chomping on the, on the bluegill and the frogs up there. So they got they're happy. That's awesome. So what the way I'm hearing what you're saying is that you are not um, 
it's not about like there's a field of pads and you start to drool and you're like that's where i'm going to throw the frog it's you're still sort of structure you're, you're going with the structure rather than what it looks like visually is that right me like, personally if i see pads which other people immediately think frogging i think last resort really yes last resort last resort why i would rather catch them in the open off of isolated cover or sparse vegetation okay. than pads. So it's landing the fish, is that exactly. what you're talking well, then, about? I want the fish to not have any obstruction when he goes and gets the bait. Okay. When you're around pads, you see it, there's that thin layer, that big pad, and it doesn't matter if it's a pad, a dollar pad that's this big, or a pad, those elephant ears that are you know two and a half feet wide. Yeah. They've gotta break through it, and they gotta get your bait. And so, for me, it's a low percentage hookup ratio when you're fishing the pads. We build great frogs that work well in the, in the pads, work exceptionally well, but there's always the chance of them, you know, hit, hitting the corner of the leaf of the ear of the, of the pad and, and missing the, the trajectory of they're determined to get the bait and they miss it. Whereas when I'm fishing open water, yeah. spot, you know, little patches of grass, yeah. man, they, there's nothing there and they grab it. And that's why I'm so successful at you know catching them on a frog when there isn't even a frog bite because I'm able to throw it around cover that's not traditionally called frog water. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't even know what to say. Every time <laughs> Dean talks, I realize that I what I do is wrong because I'm that guy. I look at a field of pads, I'm like, yoo-hoo, and you're exactly right. It's They don't get them a lot of the time. I right. mean, they just don't. You gotta understand, I'm in a competitive atmosphere. Yeah. tournament fishing if you're out there with your buddies the heck, let's go to the pad field but well, we still want to catch the fish though well, and, you know that's, that's what i'm saying is okay. that you know well, dean showed us how to work a frog i do that wrong he's telling me where to fish i do you know telling us where to fish i do that wrong. i mean it's like i feel like jumping off this boat right now <laughs> i'm a little embarrassed i'm a little i'm actually angry at myself right now i don't know if you feel that way but i hope not because then you've been doing it right all right dean thanks a bunch man. you're welcome jay anytime yeah, yeah.